Hello and welcome to IT Expert Systems PMP 2021 Certification Exam Preparation. This is part three, where we look at the process domain and scope management. The Project Management Institute has organized all of its information into knowledge areas and process groups. If you look at the old PM box, the PM BOK, the PM body of knowledge, you'll see that all of the information is organized into knowledge areas and process groups, which are known as these management processes as listed over here. Scope management, schedule management, cost management, risk management, and so forth, up to procurement management. Today, we're gonna to look at the scope management. The process domain attempts to look at the entire entirety of project management at a holistic level. It includes things like managing project artifacts, all of the various documentations, deliverables, everything that goes into creating your body of work that becomes your project. It's concerned with project knowledge management, making sure that things like lessons learned, the technical skills, the business knowledge, all of that is captured, maintained somewhere, and it composes the knowledge that's embedded in the project. project. The process domain also focuses on project closure to make sure that every project is appropriately closed with lessons learned and ensuring that the product being delivered has been delivered to everyone's satisfaction. It is concerned with project management methodology, methodology selection. There's not just one way to conduct a project there are several ways, most important ones being the Agile, which is the most popular these days, but there's also Waterfall, the traditional project management. And then the process domain is actually, all of the various processes are talking about the end-to-end -end project integration activities. How you start, how you initiate, how you plan, how you execute, how you monitor control, and how you close. So it's the entirety of the process that the process domain focuses on. Every project is undertaken to deliver a type of product. Um, so every product has features and that is what we call the scope. What is it that we are developing? Or how much of it is it that we are developing? That's gonna go into the product. So that is known as scope management. It, the, the, this activity of scope management includes things like collecting requirements from the various stakeholders to ensure that the product that we are creating or producing or developing or implementing is met to the uh, expectation and the specification, which are known as our requirements. How to manage, how to define, how to control the scope is the purview of this particular process. How do we avoid scope creeping? What is goal plating? We're going to look at all of these things as we look at scope management. One of the key activities of a project manager is to manage scope as mentioned. And towards that is to making sure there's not too much scope creep. Now scope creep basically can be defined as an uncontrolled expansion of scope without adjustment to the time or the cost or uh, people. Some scope creep is expected and may need to be incorporated. However, it's best to avoid all of it. Now there's this other notion called goal plating and which is typically refers to the addition typically by someone developing or designing the product of features that were not initially considered. It may add value, but it can also be done to inflate costs unnecessarily. So a project manager needs to manage and make sure that not too much of this is going on. A good project is always driven by a good project plan. Uh, creating a good project plan is one of the essential initial activities a project manager should focus on. It can have a management plan, so all the various things as the process domain mentioned, like quality management, risk management, cost management. Uh, but of course, initially you would make sure that you have a scope management plan and you have a requirements management plan. Once you conduct these two, uh, once you have these things well-defined, you have your entire project well-managed. Scope management means making sure that the requirements that are going into your product 
are well defined and well elicited from all of the stakeholders who will be consuming the product. Now there are various techniques for how to elicitate requirements and these are listed over here. You can have meetings to do brainstorming. You could create focus groups. You could do interviews. You could do surveys, questions, questionnaires. You could do process modeling. You could do prototypes. You could have workshops where you gather people. And essentially the idea is to refine and finalize your requirements. Collecting requirements should always be done with the cooperation of stakeholders in conjunction with their needs their interests, their concerns, their expectations. So you be nice. Make sure you analyzed uh, the requirements. Make sure they're clear, consistent, complete. The essential activity of every project manager is to ensure that the work breakdown structure and all of the various artifacts mentioned are well created by the team and well organized and well managed. Things like the work package, make the, the work package being the deliverable at the lowest level of your work breakdown structure, having a code of accounts as needed, control accounts and so forth. All of these aspects need to go into your work breakdown structure, which becomes your entirety of your scope. Now, how to get there, there's a technique you, well, the project manager can use among others, but the rolling wave planning, it's a form of progressive elaboration. This is a very popular way to basically uh, keep coming back over and over again to your scope and your requirements and your WPS and adding more and more detail as it is known. When you first start out, you will only have a high level view, but as you get deeper and deeper, you can refine and make your work breakdown structure and your entirety of your requirements and your scope complete. And towards that, you can use what we call rolling wave planning. Every project will have changes, although we do our best to avoid changes to the scope. Once the scope has been established, we would prefer to avoid any request for changes. However, many times we have no choice but to manage those changes and accept them. So changes have to be well managed and towards that, typically organizations will create a board that will provide the approval once looking at a change from all its various angles to see what its impact might be. functions of the change management board is to ensure that all of the changes that are being requested are incorporated. But as that happened, the scope gets modified. So that's one of the key jobs of the project manager is to ensure that the team and everybody involved with the project is ensuring that the scope is verified. Any changes to the deliverables, meaning any changes to the scope, does not deviate from what the original overall definition of the project was. So scope verification needs to be maintained throughout. Now, however, it's good to note that the scope verification activities are not the same as quality control activities. Although throughout the course of the project, you are making sure that the quality control is well uh, established and maintained throughout the course of the project, but it is not the same as scope verification, although the two activities may seem extremely similar. Once you've defined your requirements and you've created your WBS and you have a high level scope statement, once you've done all those things, then we say that you have created the scope baseline. And that is the baseline that one should basically save somewhere and then manage according to it. Any deviations from it will mean a change management activity. Any deviations from your scope baseline could have a financial impact and it could have a impact to the schedule. All of those things have to be managed by the project manager. A key tool helping manage the scope and the requirements is called the requirement traceability matrix. It's just a simple grid table as shown here, where you make sure that every requirement that was captured has gone through its life cycle of being designed, developed, tested, and then finally delivered to the client to his or her satisfaction. Now as preparation for your PMP exam, um, you can expect multiple choice questions. And here is an example of one around the context of scope management. So you may get a question like this. It says, validating the scope process can be best described as what? 
they'll give you four options like these, A, B, C, and D. They're four sentences. And if you give it a moment's thought, and once you've understood the subject, you realize that the correct answer in this case is D. Validating scope process means validating that all of the project's objectives have been met. Now, the agile methodology of project management is very popular, and there's a lot to be said about it, but the key thing to re remember is this. Agile basically flips the famous triangle of scope, schedule, and resources. It turns it a little bit upside down, and instead of being plan-driven, it's really value vision-driven. So we can see, we'll see more of that as we look into Agile in detail. Agile has a different way of managing scope as listed over here. And we can go into more detail in a different video. Agile has this notion of scrums and release. And this is an example of what you can do to arrive at your release with sprints, etc. Reach out to IT Expert Systems for more details around project management.